I remember going to the reception and whispered, I'm here for the uh, suicide bereavement support group. And then she said, well, the suicide bereavement support group, it's over there. And I remember having this, oh, 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 oh everybody knows. So when I speak to my children about Len Franco, he's like the fun, fun uncle they never got to meet. Yeah, so you just don't speak about it. That was the way that I got through so much in my life, yeah. Because maybe. There's nobody like our Jess. He is cheeky, charming. There was a very short video clip of him um, going to McDonald's and he went to the drive-thru except he didn't have a car. He always had a really, really wicked sense of humour, except when it came to taking photographs, he then suddenly put on this pout, um, which meant that, well, means that every photograph we have nearly is a photograph of him trying to look mean and moody. So it's really, really lovely to have this photograph where he's genuinely smiling. This is a really happy memory for us. Lan Franco, a few years before, um, he had put on quite a bit of weight, but he was quite intense with things. And when he puts his mind to something, he tends to, to deliver on that. Uh, and this photo really captures how a man who was 20 stone a few years ago managed to lose a lot of weight, get really trim, and run an amazing, almost athlete time uh, for the London Triathlon. I would describe my dad as kind, caring and charismatic. He wore his heart on his sleeve and it hurts me to think that someone who would give everything to someone else would feel as much pain and feel so alone as he did. This beautiful, beautiful weather that we have. I miss his positivity, so he, he had a great smile whenever he entered a room. And I think one of the reasons I also chose this photo is it's, it carries positive and a negative meaning because it shows the, the determination of my brother in that when he puts his mind to something he'll achieve it but then also on the flip side when he puts his mind to taking his own life he also achieved that the police they told me it was completely unexpected actually even as I'm tiny I can feel like my heart starting to beat a bit faster and then they said your son, Jess Benjamin Fairweather, is deceased. I just screamed, screamed, really screamed, and I fell to the floor. And then, and then I remember I just then, like, suddenly stopped, and then apologised, and then asked them if they wanted a cup of tea. Which was why it was a real shock for us when we found out he'd been suffering with depression and I told no one. He's not the kind of person you would think is capable of taking their own lives. For quite some time, once he died, I would send him messages and say, I love you, son. I used to, I used to tell him quite a lot, I love, love you, son, love you, son. I do love you, son. I really love you, son. What's the thing that reminds you most of him? It's this, it's this. I'm going to cry now. <laughs> it's this stuff, I think because he bought it for me um, on holiday, because he saw it and it made him think about me. I don't think I ever felt anger. I felt so much upset. And as I started to process what happened, I would take out the anger on myself. Even as a 12 year old, you still felt like you could have done something. You still felt like you could have had an impact. And that sense of, of, of guilt, that sense of frustration and, and anger, it's something that's quite hard to, to put into words. This message is dated the 10th of October at 6.10. He died on the 11th of October, 2018. Um, I say, I'm driving through Norwich from Cambridge, if you're free for a copper. Jess responded with, I'm at a quiz at the moment. Would have been nice to see you though. I responded, never mind, enjoy the quiz. And I think what's hard is, is now, like I'm, re I'm reading meaning into that, 
I'm reading, would have been nice to see you though. <gasps> what does that mean? I think after I'd recovered from the shock of finding out what had happened, I was angry. I was angry with him. They didn't tell me. They didn't give us a chance to try and help him. There was lots of things after it happened that I started to investigate what were the little micro cues that led to him taking his own life. And there were several things that I found and each one of them made me more angry that why is no one there trying to stop them? Um, and, then, and then I'm kind of flicking through of what was said before. Oh, goodness. 9th of October, 2018. He died on the 11th. 2.54 in the morning. I love you, Mum. I'm still awake. 0438. I love you too, son. And, you know, I'm thinking... Why are we both awake? Why is he texting me in the middle of the night? But how lovely that we told each other that we loved each other. The days after he'd passed, I had a look on his uh, computer and going through his internet history. And I could see the times he was using the internet was very late. He was using, he was searching two or three in the morning, even though he's got work the next day. But the thing that frightened me most looking at his searches was how they became more and more dark. So it started within September, asking Google things like, how, uh, where can I volunteer? But then as it came closer to the date that he did take his own life, it did get darker where he started asking questions like, should I leave a suicide note? And it's when you read these searches, you think, surely something should have happened there. It was so obvious. There's so much I'd want to tell him uh, this. I'm sorry you felt that much pain. I'm sorry that you felt that pain alone. I wish you knew, I guess what I knew now, that it's okay to be sad, it's okay to be upset, it's okay to be vulnerable. And I wish that I was there to intercept your last thought, intercept the last thought that you had so then it wasn't your last thought. That would be my wish, that would be what I told you right now. It doesn't discriminate suicide. It it applies to everyone. Try to look out for those cues, because you never know, someone you love might be going through a lot of pain and hiding it really well. So just look out for each other. My biggest single learning about suicide is that we have to ask. If we ever have any doubt, any gut feeling, ask that person that question, because you might just intercept their trail of thought and put them onto a more positive, alternative pathway. It takes courage, it takes a huge amount of kindness within you to actually say, you know what, I've seen something that doesn't quite feel right. I've seen that change in that person and I'm going to then go and ask them that question. That could save someone's life. If somebody is brave enough to talk, be strong enough to listen, I wish I'd listen more and taken on board what was being said to me. It's a tragedy. My beautiful, beautiful, beautiful boy had so much potential. If you're feeling suicidal, Please talk, please talk, don't bottle it up.